Wickedness is real. Oppression is real. But more real is our victory. For this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God has commissioned Bishop David Oyedipo to preach the word of faith, liberating men everywhere from all oppressions of the devil. Get set for an empowerment that will enable you to rule in the midst of your enemies and subdue them under your feet. Now, Bishop David Oyedipo. Lift up your two hands and let's worship his name one more time. Let's celebrate him for the grace he's given us to be in his presence this morning. Let's magnify him He's alive forever. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we've given thanks. Lord, thank you for another month. Thank you for the glory of the last month. Thank you for the greater glory that is in stock for us this month. Receive our thanks, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you will speak to every heart today. You will meet every need today. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We are going to be taking an adventure this month from which you will never recover all your life. Because there are keys and there are master keys. So this month, God will be placing in your hand the master key of life. And when you lay hold on that, it answers to you, it answers to you in every department of your life. Every department of your life. And I want you to be very excited. Someone called me off from Germany yesterday. Himself and the wife were on the net during the night meeting. And he said, he said, my wife knew that something was happening to me because I, I was just gyrating in the course of the teaching when I was talking on visions and revelations. He said, truly, my vision is real, but my revelation to drive it is inadequate, and I discover my problem for the first time. Unveiling the mastery of the word. Mastery. Unveiling the mastery of the word of God. Unveiling the mastery of the word of God is a four-part teaching. It's a series of four. How God's word confers mastery over your life. All departments of your life. How God's word puts you in command of the affairs of life. And I'd like you to please note that this is not designed to entertain you. It is packaged to educate you so you can make the most of your life. The issues of concern in this series will be what is in the world, what is in this book, what is unique about the content of this book, what is in this book that makes it unique. How do I assess the virtues of this book. The number three concern is what makes it work. What is in the world? How do I assess such virtues? And what is it that makes it work? Those are the three issues of concern in the course of these teachings. And I must tell you at the onset that I remove this book from my life is worth less than zero. The content of this book is the real root behind the stories I tell you and the testimonies I share with you. This fantastic ministry writes absolutely on the integrity of this book. I talk about it with passion because it carries everything that any man will ever need all his life. What is in the world, what is it that makes it unique? It was Jacob that said, God has been here all this time and I knew it not. It's one thing to hold a piece of equipment. It's another thing to know its ultimate worth. Most of us have PCs. 
But most of us do nothing with PC more than word processing. There's so much loaded in it, but that's a bit of it that we're exploring. What is in this book? Every other book informs you, but this book transforms you. The word of difference. Every other book is made up of letters, but this book is pregnant with wonders. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. My Bible says in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 1 to 3, It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. And one nation shall come and say to another, Come here and let us go to the house of the Lord that he may teach us his ways. And we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall proceed the law and the word of the law from Jerusalem. That means the revelation of the word of God is what we actually reposition the church to our rightful place. So it is the word that determines our ultimate worth in the race of life. It says, shall come to pass in the last day. That the mountains of the Lord's house shall be exalted above all, the house of the Lord shall be exalted above all mountains and established above all his, and all nations shall flow into it. So, by revelation, the church will become the envy of the world. Say with me, envy. By the revelation of the world, and they will come and say, Teach us his ways. But we can see you taking unique steps. We need to know what, what kind of steps you have taken to get to where you are. It shall come to pass. So the last days, by God's own great design, is packaged for unusual revelations. See, unusual revelations. With evident manifestations, what the people can see, what they can touch, what they can handle, we begin to happen by the application of the revelation of the word of God. That same word of prophecy is repeated verbatim in Micah chapter 4 and verses 1 and 2. It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountains and shall be exalted above the hills and all nations shall flow into it. And one nation shall say to another, Come ye and let us go to the house of the Lord, that he may teach us his ways, and we will walk in his path. For out of Zion shall proceed the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. That means the last days are the days of unusual revelations in the body of Christ. And this unusual revelation will recover the actual position of the church. As the light of the world, as the salt of the earth, as a city set on a hill that cannot be healed. That means the destiny of the church anchors on the word of God. That means your destiny and my destiny anchors on the word of God. That means the word of God is the custodian of your glorious destiny. And how much of it you are able to connect with is what defines the limits of your destiny. It shall come to pass in the last days. It shall come to pass in the last days. He said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy first too. The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thy enemies. Psalm 110 verse 1 to 3. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power. Now, you see, what that means is this. The revelation of the truth will be the weapon with which the church will begin to rule in the midst of their enemies. Come and say ruling. According to history, the little town of Otter is known for its notorious practice of witchcraft that makes almost nothing to work. Factories spring up and die almost as they spring up. 
Churches struggle for survival. Churches. Because of the wickedness of the wicked. And then came light from heaven and landed right in the midst of the forest that was supposed to be their headquarters and crushed their head practically. You understand what I'm talking about? The Lord shall send the rod of his strength out of Zion. Rule down in the midst of their enemies. It is not the weight of opposition that is the reason for your stagnation. It is your inadequate revelation that the opposition is taking advantage of. There is no day when light will struggle with darkness. Light is master over darkness any day, any time, anywhere. And the entrance of thy word giveth light. And it gives understanding unto the simple. What is in the word of God that makes it so unique? And I'll try to quickly atomize a few of those things here in this service. What's in the word? Jesus said, it is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profited nothing. The words that have spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. That is John 6 and verse 63. The words are spoken to you, they are spirit and they are life. And they are designed for your supernatural quickening. They bring back to life everything that is dying or dead. They are spirit and they are life. Let's look at them separately. The spirit of God connotes the power of God. Come and say the power of God. The Bible said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. He said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. From on high. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Luke 24 verse 49. So the spirit of God connotes the power of God. And when Peter was speaking in the house of Cornelius. The Bible said the Holy Ghost fell on all them that had the word. Acts 10 44. So God's word is the carrier of God's power. Just like mosquitoes carry malaria parasite. So God's word is a carrier of God's power. Every time the word stinks you or gets into you, power is released into your life. You know what the Bible says? As many as received him, to them gave he power. And from verse 1 of John chapter 1, he was talking about the word of God. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. And he said in verse 12, as many as received him, to them gave him power. So when you receive his word, just like when you receive a mosquito sting, a mosquito bite, it releases malaria parasite into your system. When you receive the bite of the word of God, it releases the power of God into your life. Is somebody here what I'm talking about? It is that power that transforms you. It is that power that changes your status. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation. Salvation means a change of position for the better. Unto salvation to everyone that believes. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16. So God's word communicates God's power, which guarantees your salvation and my salvation, your rescue and my rescue, your escape and my escape, your transformation and my transformation. 
So God's word is God's power in print. He said, check ye out of the book of the law and read. None of these shall fail, neither shall any want are made. For my spirit, it has gathered them, and my mouth, it has spoken them. So every of God's word is gathered by the spirit of God. So it contains the spirit inside it. Isaiah 34 verse 16. And God's word also says, very interesting, all scriptures is given by the inspiration of God. So it is the breath of God, the spirit of God that bats every scripture. So when you imbibe the word, you imbibe his spirit. You imbibe his power. So God's word transforms by his power that it communicates to us what is unique about the word of god they are spirit and they are life what kind of life number two the bible says we are for are given unto us second peter 1 4 this exceeding and great promises that by these we may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So God's word carries God's life. God's word carries God's nature. God's word carries divine nature. That means every scripture is pregnant with divine nature. Every scripture is pregnant with divine nature. So the more of scriptures you imbibe, the more of divine nature you possess. The more of scriptures you imbibe, the more of divine nature you possess. Divine abilities, divine capabilities, divine capacities. That is, the word of God inoculates us with the nature of God, the abilities of God, the capabilities of God, the capacities of God. That connects you to divinity. Is somebody hearing what I'm talking about? Mm. That's what is different from between this book and your history book, your chemistry book, your psychology book, your psychology book is different from everyone because every other book is made of letters and they are all designed to inform you. But this book is made of wonders and they are packaged to transform you, to change your level, to change your position. Is it not written? That if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scriptures cannot be broken. That means the coming in of the word of God into your life begins the process of transforming your humanity to divinity. There is a process of grading you, translating you. He said, we have been translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his own dear son. So God's word helps in enhancing the reality of that transaction. Something changes when God's word comes into you. When he said the words are spoken to you, they are spirit, they communicate my power, and they are life, they communicate my nature. This is very important. God's word said, while we behold them as in a glass, he said, as we behold them, 2 Corinthians 3, 18. As we behold him as in a glass, we are transformed or changed from glory to glory into the same image. The same image. The same image. So as we continue to imbibe his word, we are changed from glory to glory, from glory to glory, into the same image, unto the fullness of the stature of Christ. You remember in James chapter 1 and verse 25, it talks about the word of God as a glass. Glass, glass, glass. 
So when it's talking about 2 Corinthians 3, 18, we are looking, as we're looking at the mirror of the word of God, we are changed from glory to glory into the same image as by the spirit of the Lord. So God's word communicates God's power and God's word communicates God's nature. And the more of his word you imbibe, the more of his nature you manifest. The more of his word you imbibe, the more of his nature you manifest. This is very important. This is very important. That's what makes you a sign and a wonder. How many understand that God's word said, God is light and in him is no darkness at all. 1 Peter 1.5 now, God is light. Sorry, First John. God is light. God is light. And the Bible said the entrance of his word giveth light. Is somebody connect with what I'm talking about? That means the entrance of his word releases God into us. Because God is light and the understanding of his word also gives light. So the more of his word we imbibe, the more of his nature we are positioned to manifest. Please take note of that. And let's stop looking at scriptures the same way they look at Quran. It is not to be chanted, it is to be understood and applied. Is somebody here know what I'm talking about? From glory to glory, he's changing me, changing me. Change me his likeness, the love of God shown to the world. He is changing. To the heavenly, his likeness to perfect in me, the love of God shown to the world. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. First John chapter 1 verse 5 and the entrance of his word gives light and it gives understanding to the simple. So every truth you discover and engage enhances the life of God in you. Please watch it. What is in the world? Very important. What do we have in the world? Number three, the word of God is the carrier of the wisdom of God. Come and say the wisdom of God. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 15, and from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. And from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise. God's word makes wise. Second Timothy 3.15 Not just wisdom, but divine wisdom. Because whatever is from above is above all. It communicates the wisdom from above, which positions you above all. The psalmist said, Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day long. Thou through thy commandments hast made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever with me. I have more understanding than my teachers, because I keep their places. I understand more than the Asian because I keep your word. Psalm 119 verse 97 to 100. So God's word communicates God's wisdom that positions you above your peers, above your teachers, and above the ancient. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The commandments of the Lord are sure. Making wise the simple. Psalm 19, verse 7 to 9. And this is what Jesus said 
whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, the same is a wise man who has built his house upon the rock. Matthew 7 and verse 24 to 28. So God's word communicates God's wisdom that makes you stand shoulder higher than your peers. In Luke 11 verse 49, he said, he defined God's word as the wisdom of God. He said, and the wisdom of God says. So God's word is God's wisdom in print. God's word is God's wisdom bank. So the more of his word you imbibe, the more of his wisdom you are able to manifest in your daily journey, in your daily life. So God's word inoculates us with God's power, inoculates us with God's wisdom, God's nature. Now see, by the time you have these things working inside one man, there is no way you can live an ordinary man, an ordinary life. You can't live an ordinary life. The power of God, the nature of God, the wisdom of God. I mean, that's why the Bible said, I and the children which God has given me, they are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts who dwells in Mount Zion. He said, look at Joshua and the fellows that see before him, they are men wondered at. Beginning from this month, starting from this morning, everyone will begin to wonder at you. The same way they wonder at your church, wonder at your ministry, wonder at your university. From today, everyone you come in contact with will begin to wonder at you. The same way they wonder at your pastor. Every pastor around the world claims that I've not told them everything. They still think there must be some things I was doing behind that I've not told them. This is what I'm doing behind. It is this book that is biting me daily and releasing into me those parasites I'm mentioning that's making me live a very strange life. Divine power. Listen to me. Divine power, divine nature, divine wisdom. You can't live an ordinary life loaded with those stuff. You can't. Stop reading your Bible as a religious catechism. What else is in the world? Say with me, divine health. He said, my son, attend to my words. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 20 to 22. He said, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of thy heart. For they shall be life to them that find it and health to all their flesh. So God's word communicates divine health. Come and say divine health. He sent his word. And what happens? And the word healed them. And the word delivers them out of all their destructions. Psalm 107 and verse 20. He sent his word. And the word he sent heals them. And that word delivers them out of all their destructions. Jesus was teaching, Luke chapter 5 verse 17, and the power of God was present to heal them. And every healing, according to scriptures, is God showing his power over the oppressions of the devil. He said he went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil. So God's word does not only keep you healthy, it sets you free from satanic harassment. It sets you free from what? Satanic harassment. There is a way you are loaded with the truth. You can't dream nonsense dream. You can't. Your body is so solid. It's spiritually solid. You are a time bomb. There is no way you can find goats and rams playing around a lion because he's sleeping. The moment you sight a lion... Now, so, in your sleeping state, you are still in charge when your system is charged with the truth. Can I hear your loudest amen? This is very important. Now, think of it first. That here is a man 
that is charged with divine power, charged with divine nature, charged with divine wisdom, charged with divine health. It's finished. What is it to worry about? As far as the operation of the devil is concerned, forget it. Because God's word does not only enlighten you, it lightens you. He said this is the true light that lighted every man that comes into this world. That is, it turns you to a spiritual illuminant. You are a spiritual fluorescent. So darkness can harass you. Every time Jesus was coming, evil spirits would start running, hey, hey, hey. He wasn't talking to them. But they can't stand his appearance. As you go through the teachings of this month and take your time to invest your time and energy in seeking after the truth, no more satanic harassments around your life. <laughs> During the construction of the faith tabernacle, I was on my way to town around 1.30 a.m. in the morning. And some robbers were on the way. And some OPC were also on the trail of these armed robbers. And when one of them came on the road and spotted my car, he said, hey, take cover, the bishop. Take cover, the bishop. Take cover. Now, see, it was in the night. I was by myself in the Holy Ghost with my driver only with me. It was the OPC leader that came here when God arrested him and gave his life to Christ to share the testimony. So they now say, well, when they tried to kill this robber, it was difficult until they broke his head. As if he was this charm and was running away from a man of God, let's go find out who that man is. Some of you heard the story when it was told. There is a place you occupy that evil gives way on its own when you are coming. You are coming, evil gives way on its own. Now, now listen. I don't know any arm robber that may be here. That's his problem. But the arm robber will say to me, lift your hand. The devil has not born him yet. Which mouth will he use to say it? How will he say it first? Now, how will he say it first? There's a way you are charged with light. That when you appear, which is keep quiet. You appear wizards, keep quiet. Now, ask the other witches, where are you? They say, we can't come near here. Where are you? We can't come near here. You come near, you are dead. It's not, there is no argument. That's what makes you think. He said, this is the true light that lighteth every man, that illuminates every man. That turns every natural man to a divine illuminant. He appears, darkness disappears. He steps in, darkness steps out. I mean, that's what happens when you are thoroughly lighted. Come and say it with me, thoroughly lighted. When you are thoroughly lighted, that's what happens. So you now know that the Bible is not uh, a GCO level textbook. It is the master key of life. And what we're doing all through this month is unveiling the mastery of the world. How the word of God positions you for mastery over the affairs of life. Where you can't be messed up by, no, by nobody. Can't you see how beautiful and how awesome that book in your hand is? No matter how many mosquitoes are roaming around your room, if they don't bite you, they can't release their parasite. No matter how many copies of the Bible you have and the different translations, if you don't receive the bite, it cannot release its virtue. Let's move from religion into reality. What is in the book that makes it unique? Hallelujah. Say with me, peace. Divine peace. Peace that passes all understanding inexplainable peace peace like an ever flowing river haven't you heard grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ 2 Peter 1 2 
Grace and peace multiplies with the knowledge of God. So the more of the knowledge of the truth you possess, the more peace you enjoy. Inexplainable peace. Peace like a river. In Isaiah 26 and verse 3, Great peace of day, whose mind is stayed on him, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall upset them. Great peace. Come and say great peace. God's word communicates inexplainable peace. Divine peace. Peace that cannot be measured scientifically. Peace like a river. Most of you are aware during the time of my wife's Challenge of my wife's health, severe, rough, but at peace. Inexplainable peace. Unscientific peace. Peace like a river. I was all over the world. I visited 27 nations in the midst of the crisis, celebrating away. I was praying for the sick and commanding devils to come out of people and delivering people into their destinies. I wasn't faking it. I was just myself. Peace. Like a river. Inexplainable peace. Explainable peace. Great peace of day. Whose mind is saturated with him. And nothing shall upset them. Peace. You can't get that to buy for money, can you? I know many wealthy people who don't know anything about peace in their life. When it's morning, they wish it were night. When it's night, they wish it were morning. They are constantly living in suspense. And when they see a number of us, they say, no, they are faking it. It's not real. No, no. There's nobody doing this kind of thing who will claim that it's at peace. Be suffering. That's your choice. <laughs> hey, man, you, I mean... <laughs> You carry on with your suffering. I carry on with my peace. Um, carry on with your suffering. I carry on with my peace. Peace like a river. You, do you still remember that two months of the time of dedication of this facility, this structure, we were still doing the roofing. How many remember that? Uh -huh. And I'm sure most of your legs were wobbling that time. Are we really sure? Are we, oh God, have mercy. We were afraid for God. We were shaking for God. Oh God, oh. <laughs> help our pastor. Oh God, help our pastor. <laughs> Amen. Great peace. Great peace. Have they whose mind is stayed on him, whose mind is saturated with him, whose hearts are filled with his knowledge, and nothing shall upset them. I see you walking in the realms of inexplainable peace from today. Peace like a river. Can you imagine you loaded with all these virtues? You can't live an ordinary life. Ever serene, ever calm, ever collected, with a conqueror's view of everything, he looks at every challenge as an opportunity. Peace like a river. That's your portion. <laughs> Jesus shed his blood to terminate your crisis. To enjoy his peace from henceforth. <laughs> what else do we have in the world? What is in the world? Say with me, joy unspeakable. Say it louder, joy unspeakable. If you like to call it divine joy, divine joy, joy that cannot be interpreted, is just there, oozing forth like a fountain. In Jeremiah chapter 15 and verse 16, thy words were found, and I did eat them. And thy words became the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Joy and rejoicing. Joy and rejoicing. Joy and rejoicing. 
In First Peter chapter 1 and verse 8, this is what the word says. Whom having not seen, ye love. Though now ye see him not, yet believing the word, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable, full of glory. First Peter chapter 1 verse 8. Joy unspeakable, which comes through believing God and believing his word. Believing has to do with the word, isn't it? Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you tap into the word, it injects you with joy unspeakable that is full of glory. Joy that cannot be psychologically interpreted. Joy that is oozing forth like a fountain. Joy unspeakable. This man is too loaded to fail. Any man that connects with these seven power points I've mentioned, there is much more to it. But think of those seven alone. Then you see the need. So I'm sorry for you saying that. You see, I'm so busy. You see, my new position is so demanding. It's so difficult to read the Bible. You see, coming to church is tough. You know, our management meetings hold most of the time on Sunday morning. Well done. May you not mismanage your destiny. <laughs> May you not mismanage your destiny. <laughs> David was a king. And he was praising God seven times a day. And David said, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Thou through thy commandments hast made me worse than my enemies, for they are ever with me. Have more understanding than my teachers, because I keep thy law. I understand more than the Asians because thy words are my meditation. How love I. He was praying three times. He was praising God ten times. All the people in your management, don't they go to their drinking bars every day? It's part of their management, isn't it? So introduce your own aspect. They go after beer. They go after wine. They go all over town doing all manner of stuff. They go after golf. They go after tennis. What are you going after? If you don't know your own, they'll carry you to their own in no time. David knew where to go. In, my, in all my career life, I've always maintained a full-time Christian status. Come and say full-time. Even as a student, I challenge my teachers. I'm a full-time Christian and a part-time student. That's my choice. If you're angry, you're angry for yourself. The first two years of my being born again, I read the entire New Testament that I could almost stand and reel out one chapter, two chapters, three chapters. I wasn't cramming them, I was eating them. God's nature was infusing and flushing my system. I couldn't know, I know it. I told our students yesterday, nine years before I was married, I was already consulting on marital matters. People come to me to make consultations. And one person came one day and said, what of in your own case? I said, I'm not married. I said, it's not true. <laughs> you know, God is the ancient of days. <laughs> when you are under his tutelage, you live above your age. You don't know what. This is very important. You need time with the word of God. If you don't carry yourself to a nurse, can he inject you? If you don't carry yourself to God and sit down with his word, there is no way he can inject you with his life. So let's get back there. All I want to do is just for you to get out of here and become a word addict. Because that is the answer book of life. Where are you running from pillar to post looking for an answer that is in your house? That's where it is. Now you have access to divine power. You have access to divine nature. You have access to divine wisdom. You have access to divine peace, divine joy. I mean, 